Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be revealing a niche that's been trending for a while now on Etsy that is tied to a growing interest in so-called frame TVs. Frame TVs are basically TV sets that have an art mode that allows them to become picture frames when they're powered down. They usually have customizable frames, matte screens with anti-reflection properties and slim fit wall mounts so they can emulate actual picture frames. The whole idea behind Frame TVs is to basically camouflage your TV so that it can display attractive artwork rather than a dull black screen when it's not in use. The most popular frame TV on the market is Samsung's uh, The Frame, but other manufacturers like LG are also producing televisions with the same frame-like uh, capabilities. So what is the Etsy niche I'm referring to? It's a uh, frame TV artwork. Uh, which is basically digital artwork that can be sold and downloaded by customers who can then view those images on any TV with uh, frame capabilities. If we have a look at these Google trend charts, uh, we'll see that the search terms frame TV and frame TV art are experiencing an upward uh, trend since the TV's first release in uh, 2017. And if we scroll down, we can also see in which countries there is more interest for frame TVs and frame TV artwork. That is always good to know, especially if we eventually intend to carry out any kind of paid uh, marketing campaigns. As you can see from these figures on Insight Factory, uh, this kind of artwork seems to be doing quite well. The uh, top seller has sold 77 pieces of artwork in the last seven days, and the listing isn't even a month old at the time of recording this video. The second listing on the list uh, has had 59 downloads and the listing is quite recent as well. We can also see that uh, similar to regular digital artwork for print that is sold on Etsy, this kind of artwork seems to be subject to seasonal trends, which is something we should obviously uh, take note of. While we're here, we're going to get some ideas for some profitable, uh, popular artwork niches and then head over to Midjourney to create our artwork. Unsurprisingly, at the moment, floral springtime artwork is trending and is in high demand, so we're going to hop on that trend. And in particular, I'm choosing these uh, hydrangea paintings as a reference for the kind of artwork I would like to make and uh, publish myself. They are uh, both the best sellers, and I think they're a good example of the kind of aesthetic that uh, could resonate with my target audience. A quick tip here, if you don't have access to Insight Factory or any other Etsy keyword research tools, you can always head over to Etsy and do some basic but nonetheless powerful on-page niche research. First of all, once you start typing in your main keyword, the auto suggest drop down from the search bar will give you an indication of the most popular and trending search queries related to that keyword. On the results page for the query you choose, you can filter your results to find the best sellers in that niche. Since Etsy doesn't have a default bestseller filter, you can find the best sellers by going to all filters here in the top left corner and selecting star seller from this side menu. And then up in the web URL bar, you'll notice there's a snippet towards the end of the URL that's worded uh, underscore star underscore seller. All we have to do is replace the word star with best and hit enter to refresh the page. And there we have it. We've uh, just filtered out our results with all the best selling listings uh, competing for our main query. Remember that not all the results on this page will be organic. Uh, some of them will be paid advertisements since Etsy will normally display a mix of both sponsored and organic listings for your search query. For the sake of this tutorial, we're going to take the process a step further and search for some public domain images that are similar to the images we would like to reference and use those in Midjourney. So I'm going to start off by searching for a reference image I can use to create my artwork in Midjourney on the uh, Wikimedia Commons website. I'll come to the search bar and type in hydrangeas. Um, since that gives me mostly stock photography images, I'm adding the word painting to my search query. And as a result, I do start getting some options I can work with. I'm going to download this image here. It's uh, Stuart Park's uh, white hydrangea um, that is in the public domain. And I'm going to continue to search for more similar images. I also found this image here from Marie, uh, Marie Ballou uh, um, 
Now, uh, don't worry if the public domain image you find isn't that similar to the original reference image you would like to emulate. First of all, because our intention is not to copy the original image, but to create an image that has a similar style and aesthetic. And secondly, the processes we will use in mid-journey, especially submitting our reference image uh, images through the describe feature, will hopefully yield a number of variations on that same sort of general theme that may at one point also converge uh, with the original Etsy image's main artistic characteristics and attributes. You'll also be able to bend the generation process uh, to be more in line with your aesthetics with the aesthetics you uh, would like to achieve by directly modifying the prompts and testing out different variations of the same. Another website uh, where I had some luck finding public domain images for a project is freeimages.com and the URL is actually free-images.com. Here I suggest you actually click on the main results you get because at the bottom of the pages that, that open up, there are uh, some more related images that can be useful as well. Actually, that is exactly how I found some more images that we'll be using in a moment uh, when we move over to Midjourney. I also wanted to mention that I'll be working exclusively in Discord in this video since some of the features and commands I'll be using are not yet available on the Midjourney Alpha website and not everyone has access to it at the moment. I will however be using the new website more and more in future tutorials as it draws near completion and is open to the wider public. Before we go any further, I'd like to share my settings in Midjourney. I'm running uh, version 6 as the default AI model, uh, medium stylization, and I'm in high variation mode and remix mode is active. So I've got these images I can start working with as reference images in Midjourney to see if I can get any good results. If you've seen uh, my previous videos, you'll know that in these cases, my go-to strategy for recreating images from references uh, starts with the describe command. So I'm simply going to run all these public uh, domain images I've downloaded through uh, the forward slash describe in Midjourney. And uh, just out of uh, curiosity, I'm going to run the screenshots of the original Etsy images through the describe feature as well just to see what the image generator comes up with, although I won't be actually using the generated images on Etsy. Once Midjourney has completed the task of describing the images, I have the option of either launching the generations for all the prompts that were provided uh, simultaneously by clicking on the Launch All button, or I can launch them one by one by selecting the button underneath the reference image with the corresponding prompt number. In our case, since aspect ratios are detected and allocated uh, based on the reference image's original aspect ratio, we are uh, going to have to run the prompts individually and adjust the aspect ratios of each of the prompts to uh, 16 to 9 uh, in the remix prompt box that pops up and then hit submit when we're done. Remember, you must be in remix mode uh, for the prompt box to appear. Uh, to check if you're in remix mode, Go to forge last settings and select a remix if it's deselected. I can see that some of these are already quite promising. Remember, you can always run and test your prompts on different versions of the Midjourney AI model since each one will produce different representations of the prompt based on its training. As you can see, I've added a permutation with all the main Midjourney versions I want to test, although I still prefer version 6 for these particular generations. Another thing I noticed is that the prompts that were generated through the describe feature were mostly referring to generic flowers as the subject of the prompt. So I went ahead and replaced the words flower, the word flowers uh, with the more specific uh, hydrangeas. And I also decided to try out peonies uh, since they are another popular springtime flower. And I did that um, by adding a permutation to the prompt just to save some time. Remember, uh, Midjourney will always notify you via a message in Discord of the number of prompts the permutation will produce and request you to agree and confirm you want to generate all the images. I'm going to start upscaling the images I believe could work best as uh, Frame TV artwork based on our previous market research. Since uh, we may want to create collections of the artwork we are generating based on their stylistic uh, communalities or similarities, 
Um, we are also going to create variations of the artwork via the uh, very uh, su subtle and very strong features. Um, these will create replicas of our artwork, adding either light or stronger variations uh, to the core image. We can then again select and upscale a section of the resulting generations. This step isn't completely necessary as there are top Etsy sell listings uh, selling just one single image. Just one quick tip, if you get lost and don't know which images your upscales or variations, variations generated from, you can always click on the Midjourney bot message at the very top of the individual post that, that will automatically direct you to the message it uh, originated from. At this point, uh, once we've selected and performed simple upscales of the images we want to use for our Frame TV artwork, we can start to inspect them one by one to see if there are any imperfections within the image we would like to adjust. If we do find images that need to be edited, uh, we would have the option of either exporting the image to an external photo editing program like Photoshop, for example, or if they are minor edits, we may be able to carry that, them out uh, within Midjourney by using its in-painting and out-painting features that in Midjourney are known as uh, Very Region for in-painting and the Zoom Out and Custom Zoom for out-painting. I'm not a big fan of switching back and forth between different photo uh, processing tools. I really like to keep my workflows all in one place as much as possible. In our case, I think that for the level of editing that may be necessary, Midjourney is more than sufficient. The next step would be to increase the resolution of the images by upscaling them. The resolution of uh, Frame TV screens is 4K resolution. That's uh, specifically 3,840 pixels wide by 2,160 pixels high at a pixel density that ranges between approximately 60 and 80 uh, pixels per inch, depending on the screen size. According to my research, even higher range TVs at 8K resolution only really seem to reach a maximum pixel density of 160 uh, PPI. Nonetheless, I've noticed that other Etsy sellers uh, treat this artwork as they treat regular printable artwork usually um, preparing and offering the files for download at a pixel density of uh, 300 ppi. And since it seems to be working well for them, uh, we'll just basically do the same. I've talked intensive, intensively on upscaling and improving image resolution in a previous video, so I won't go too much into detail on the process here. All we really need to know is, at this point is that we want our final Frame TV artwork to be 3,840 by 2,160 pixels at a resolution or a pixel density of 300 PPI. You can carry out 2x and 4x upscales in Midjourney, but only in version 5 at the moment. If you created your artwork in version 6, like we have, there's a workaround to convert your images to version 5 and upscale them. All you need to do is select the very region option on any version 6 upscaled image Add or change the version of the uh, generation in the prompt editing field by typing um, dash dash v space 5 or any other uh, minor versions of uh, 5, like 5.2, uh, and select the blank square outside of the image. Note that there's no need to actually select any part of the image. Then launch the generation by clicking on the arrow next to the prompt field. This will create a grid of four images that are identical to the original version 6 image, but converted to version 5. You can now do a simple upscale of any one of these images, and you'll see that the upscale 2x and 4x functions will be available, and you can therefore upscale your image uh, two or four times like you would normally do uh, in version 5. At this point, uh, though, since the majority of my images are in uh, version 6 and I have quite a few images to upscale, I believe it would be quicker to move uh, the upscaling process away from Midjourney. I would say up to 20, 30 images would be my personal cutoff point for considering whether or not it would be worth upscaling in Midjourney, since it would become so uh, time consuming to, to go through the whole process, especially if you're on a standard plan and you can only queue so many uh, jobs at a time. But before I make up my mind, uh, I'm going to do some testing to see if I can get a good enough quality upscale with Topaz Gigapixel uh, to justify using Gigapixel AI rather than Midjourney. 
For this kind of digital artwork, I believe it is important to preserve some textures like canvas and brush stroke uh, textures that Midjourney normally produces very well, even if it's uh, even in its upscaled images. Uh, if I won't uh, be able to get the same level of detail, I won't switch over to Gigapixel AI since these images will be displayed on large uh, screen TVs that people will be able to view up close and any strange artifacts that the upscaling process may produce will most likely be very noticeable. To be honest, I'm quite happy with these results I got in Gigapixel AI uh, this time around. It can happen that the results aren't always satisfactory and I have reverted to Midjourney for upscaling in the past but I think that these upscaled images are quite good quality. The upscaled images even have a bit of added texture themselves compared to the original Midjourney image. The quickest way to bulk export your preferred Midjourney generations, in my opinion, is to swiftly run through them on your Discord feed from top to bottom and mark the ones you want to download as liked by clicking on the red heart. Then move over to the Midjourney website at midjourney.com or alpha.midjourney.com for the alpha website and under the My Images tab or Archive on the Alpha website, um, filter your images for Upscaled and Liked. Uh, select all the images you want to download by either pressing Shift and clicking on them individually or left click on your mouse and drag over all the images you would like to select. To download them, uh, click on the download button that appears on the selection bar at the bottom of the screen. Midjourney will then download the images in batches of 50 images or less. Uh, consider that a Midjourney may take some time to prepare the images between downloads, so after you've downloaded your first batch of images, you would just have to wait a short while until the next batch is ready to download and so on um, until you've downloaded all your images to your device. The images I downloaded from Midjourney are uh, 1456 by 816 pixels. Unfortunately, these images are not a perfect, six, uh, perfect uh, 16 to 9 aspect ratio, so before we go any further, we would need to adjust this error. The correct dimensions we need our images to be uh, to get a perfect 16 to 9 aspect ratio are uh, 1451 by 816 pixels. You can get that figure through a mathematic, mathematical proportion, or you can use an online calculator like this one uh, that will give you these the results uh, automatically once you select the aspect ratio and input the dimensions of either height or width. Unfortunately, simply cropping the image in Photoshop isn't giving me accurate results since it's rounding the width down to 1450 pixels rather than rounding it up to 1451 pixels. This level of precision may seem a bit exaggerated, but if we're not accurate at this stage, we'll end up getting incorrect results as we scale these images to our required 4K resolution. So rather than cropping the image, uh, we're going to change the canvas width size to 1451 pixels, and we can do that by either opening the image in Photoshop and adjusting the width size in the image's properties panel, or we can change the canvas size by selecting the image tab from the top main menu, then canvas size from the drop down, and finally adjust the width size in the dialog box that pops up. Because I'm always looking for the cleanest and most efficient way of structuring my workflows, I did try this out in Photopea that is a sort of basic online version of Photoshop and the cropping worked out uh, better than it did in Photoshop and Gigapixel AI since Photopea cropped the image down to uh, 1451 pixels straight off the bat without having to type in the value anywhere. So also for future reference, you may want to give this editing tool a try. Uh, you won't find some of the more recent Photoshop features like uh, neural filters or any of the new generative AI tools. Um, but if you need to carry out some basic editing like what we're doing here, it can be very handy, and the upside is that it's absolutely free to use. You can also create actions and batch process images in Photopea just like you would in Photoshop, which is another big plus in favor of this uh, online editing program. So now we can bulk upscale the images in Gigapixel AI. We simply import the images, set uh, the resize mode to width, uh, select inches as our unit of measure and adjust the value to uh, 12.8. The height should automatically adjust to 
these are the equivalent in inches to our standard uh, 3840 by 2160 dimensions in pixels. Then we set the pixel per unit to 300 so we can export our upscaled images at a resolution of 300 ppi. We have to set width as our resize mode and therefore use inches as a unit of measure because it is the only way Gigapixel AI will allow us to set the pixel density to 300 ppi. I would uh, personally switch on the auto function for both the AI model section and the settings, but you can use custom settings if you prefer. We can uh, now hit the save button on the bottom of the side panel, and finally we can decide on which format we would want to save the images. JPEG will do just fine in my opinion, uh, since we won't be editing this, these uh, images anymore, and JPEG files will be overall more manageable compared to PNG files. Around 90 should be a good enough quality factor, but you can test this uh, for yourself. Consider that the higher this value, the bigger the size of the image files. However, Gigapixel AI gives you an approximation of how big the file will be based on the level of compression you choose here. You can see the estimated file size um, change in real time as you move the slider in this sort of caption next to the image thumbnail. This way, you can adapt the size of your upscaled images to the limits Etsy sets when uploading digital download files uh, to the platform. Once we have our upscaled images, we can sort them according uh, to the different collections we would like to create, that is, uh, if we decide to create any. As I mentioned earlier, many Etsy sellers are successful, successfully selling uh, even just one or very few uh, pieces of artwork per listing. At this stage, we can create our Etsy listing, uh, but we'll do that in a second separate video where we'll be carrying out some keyword research using Etsy SEO tools like uh, Insight Factory and E-Rank so we can optimize our listings, titles, tags, and descriptions for search. Uh, we'll also prepare our listing images, including our Frame TV mockups, and explore which options we may have to make the digital artwork available to customers for download. So if you're interested, stay tuned and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on this or any other content I may publish in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.